Big Slick here repairing a DBX 118 dynamic range enhancer. The problem with this one is it dropped one channel and it wasn't a typical problem like capacitors and that that everybody seems to gravitate towards. In this case on one of the VCA uh, drop-in boards here, these both, both of these boards are identical and the problem was on the one that dropped the channel, there is a CA3046 package. It's a 14 pin. It has five identical transistors in them, just general purpose, although two of them are matched. And fortunately, one of these five transistors opened. It just went completely open. Usually transistors short or get noisy. In this case, it just opened. Well, it wasn't one of the ones that were a matched pair. So I just went ahead and added a general purpose uh, S8050 transistor to replace the one that opened. And then I went ahead and whenever it was back together, I calibrated it using my distortion meter to minimize the output distortion. Now both channels are performing identical. So this is a tip that if you have a problem in one of these channels and you're having trouble finding it, check these uh, drop-in boards on this unit in this orientation. This one is right here is channel one. This one is channel two. And uh, just pull the board out, get your uh, digital meter on diode check check each of the five transistors that are inside the package of the CA3046 and if you have one that's open or otherwise defective uh, you can replace it as long as it's not the two that are matched if, the, if that you'll probably have to re replace the whole uh, CA3046 chip but otherwise if it's one of the other I should clarify that one of them is actually not in use in in here. I believe they're only using four of the five, but the way the board's designed, they have on one of them, it's like jumped together. So basically, you're not going to get a reading off of one of them. It's going to just test shorted, but that's, that's normal because they're not using that transistor. So on the other ones, what you want to do is just uh, check and you should get a normal transistor test. So I'll go ahead and I'll hook it up to the scope and I'll show you both channels on the output. Yeah, I'll try to get both of this in camera if I can. So there's a tip for you, sometimes on one of these packaged ICs you don't have to replace the whole IC if all it does is have uh, general purpose transistors inside of it. And here's the data sheet for the CA3046 and if you look right here it says general purpose NPN transistor array. So there's nothing particularly unique about this. Uh, Two of the transistors are internally connected to form a differentially connected pair. But other than those two, the other three are just general NPNs. I used a S8050, but I'm sure pretty much any general purpose that you get for 10 cents or less would work fine in this application. So that's a tip for you in case you run into a similar issue and you're having trouble tracking it down check for open or de otherwise defective transistors inside of the CA3046 uh, IC and if you only have one that's bad you can go ahead and replace it externally with a small transistor as I did you see on the back of that board right there. 
What I also did too, I don't think in this case, the way this failure was, it was a complete open. I went ahead and used a very fine Dremel tool to cut the pins at the chip on the, each of those three areas. In other words, it was um, six, seven, and eight in this example were, was the uh, transistor that went bad. It went to pin six, seven, and eight. So I cut those legs off of the CA3046 just to make sure that nothing internally on the chip would conflict with the external transistor that I installed. Probably in this case it wasn't necessary because it was an open, but better be safe than uh, have any type of distortion enter into the circuit. If it was a shorted situation, you would absolutely have to have cut the pins. That's very delicate work. You really can't get diagonals in there to do it, but I had a extremely tiny cutting wheel for a Dremel and I just very carefully buzzed those legs off of the IC. So there's uh, some tips for you. Hopefully, you know, it might help somebody get one of these up and going again.